Hannah thought that the day she bought a stroller was one of the most unusual days of her life. The stroller looked new, but she bought it for half the price. She couldn't afford to buy a new stroller because she didn't have much money. Hannah had no one to help her, but she really needed a stroller because her daughter, Caroline, was growing very fast and it was hard to walk with her in her arms. At home, she decided to clean the stroller, eh, just in case. Under the mattress, she found a piece of paper. It must be a receipt from the store, Anna thought, and decided to check it. After reading the short, handwritten text, she was surprised. Hannah was a single mother, but not because she got into all sorts of trouble like many orphans. No, she was a responsible girl and had dreamed of having a family since she was a child, and she had a chance to make her life the way she wanted. She was placed in the orphanage when she was six, and she remembered life with her parents with horror. Her parents were alcoholics, and social services tried to do something. They constantly came to them with inspections, but when they realized that the parents weren't going to take care of their kids, they initiated the process of depriving them of their parental rights. That was how Hannah and her younger brother, who was two years old, ended up in the orphanage. She had a terrible mother, but Hannah missed her very much at first and waited for her parents to come and take her home. But that never happened. Her parents kept drinking and giving birth to more children, but all of them were placed in the orphanage, so Hannah didn't even know how many brothers and sisters she had. Life at the orphanage wasn't bad. She was smart, diligent, kind, and patient. Also, that's where she met Joel. When they got older, they realized they were not just friends. They were in love. They decided to get married after they left the orphanage, but they knew they had to go to college and get jobs first. After they left the orphanage, the state provided each of them with a one-bedroom apartment and some money to start a new, independent life. After graduating from college, Joel and Hannah finally decided to get married. The girl was already in her third month of pregnancy, and everything seemed to be going well for them. The young couple lived in Joel's apartment, and there was a tenant living in Hannah's apartment. They earned some more money this way, for they were starting life from scratch and had no one to help them. They didn't even have the most necessary things. When they got their paychecks, they didn't even know whether to buy chairs or dishes first. And every day there were more needs and less money. And soon they would have a baby. They were afraid to even think about how many different things they had to buy for a baby. After college, they both worked at the same company. Joel also worked part-time as a cab driver at night. But when people love each other and want to live together until they are old, they can overcome all difficulties. At least, that's what Hannah thought. She had a husband and a place to live and soon they will save some money, sell their one-bedroom apartments, and buy a spacious house. There will be enough space for not one, but two children. She often shared her dreams with her husband and did not notice that Joel wasn't interested in discussing his wife's plans anymore. Joel became bored with family life. He knew that nothing good awaited him in such a life. Often in the evenings, waiting for the next client, he thought with frustration, I'm only 23, but what is my future? A job I hate, a low salary, working in a cab service at night so that once a month I can afford some fun, going out to the cinema with Hannah, or having a cheap beer with friends, and that's how I'll have to live until I retire. I can't even expect any change for the better. I shouldn't get married so young. I did it just because I was scared of living alone. I thought someone should cook dinner, clean the apartment, and meet me when I came home from work in the evening. 
I was afraid of being alone. I could live by myself and do whatever I wanted, invite friends and girls, throw parties, but now Hannah is in my apartment, wearing her cheap robe, cooking meatballs or soup, and pretty soon there will also be a baby crying all the time. I won't even have a chance to relax after work. One day, while he immersed himself in depressing thoughts, a passenger got into his car, and her beauty impressed him. A gorgeous girl, wearing a not-so-expensive, but stylish outfit. Except, she was upset. And so was Joel. She sat in the front seat and was silent, just looking out the window, not saying a word. Where should I drive you? Joel asked, thinking, my life could have been a lot more interesting with a girl like that, and I could make her life better too. I don't know, I don't care, she replied. Just go somewhere. Don't worry, I have money. When you get bored, stop, and I'll pay and get out of the car. I won't get bored, Joel replied in a stifled voice as he started the car. Did something happen to you? Are you a doctor or a priest? The girl grinned, sadly. Nothing happened to me. And that's the problem. Nothing happens in my life. Do you know any interesting places in the city? Joel realized he didn't know any interesting places. He knew the city, the streets, and the routes, but no interesting places. No, I don't, he answered honestly, and unexpectedly he said, nothing happens to me either. Meeting you was the first pleasant thing. You're so gorgeous. They drove along the empty road, talking about something trivial, but gradually their conversation became more and more meaningful. Soon Joel knew that the girl's name was Tiffany. She was 27 and was unhappy. Everything seemed to be good, but there was nothing important in her life. Nothing worth living for. Does something like that bother you too, Joel? You're younger than me. Your life should be eventful and interesting, Tiffany said. Well, I'm 23 and I have the most important thing. I have a wife and we're about to have a baby. I also have a small apartment, a job, and countless responsibilities. And that's it. And that's how I have to live for the rest of my life. I'll never get out of this horror. Do you want to live like that? Joel said with a gloomy face. Poor boy. You just took the wrong path in life. Tiffany suddenly stroked his head. How did your mother let you get married so young? I don't have a mother. I never had. I was raised in an orphanage. I just wanted a family. I wanted to be loved. Hannah and I have known each other since we were children. She also was raised in the orphanage. And then we went to college together. Now we are together all the time. We live together and work in the same company. She's nice, but... Poor thing. Well, it's not too late for you to make things right. You have time. The main thing is not to miss the chance. Tiffany whispered to him. Thus began Joel and Tiffany's affair. Even though Joel was about to be a father. At first, he hid it, and Hannah had no idea what caused her husband's mood swings. Joel kept making excuses about why he wasn't home all the time, and Hannah believed him. When he came home, everything seemed disgusting to him. He ate dinner that his wife cooked reluctantly, and didn't want to answer her questions or even talk to her. As it turned out, Tiffany was living in a rented apartment, working for a big company, and fell in love with her young lover. And he got everything he dreamed of with her, 
and even more. She was caring like a mother. At the same time, she was a passionate and wise woman. He fell in love more and more every day. Hannah and the baby now seemed like a burden that didn't mean anything to him. Tiffany supported him and kept saying, You don't have to worry about it, Joel. A lot of people get divorced. There's nothing wrong with that. After all, she won't be homeless. She's got the apartment, and you can pay child support. She should have thought about the possible consequences before getting married. She needed an older man, a wealthy man. But she married you. It's all her fault. The arguments of his mistress seemed more and more convincing. But Joel was in no hurry to tell his wife everything. Tiffany supported even this decision. That's right. Wait until the baby comes. Pregnant women shouldn't be upset. Otherwise, she'll have a sick baby. Then you'll be paying for that baby's treatment for the rest of your life. Sometimes, Tiffany said horrible things about Hannah and the baby. But Joel didn't care. He no longer felt anything for his baby and wife, only annoyance. He decided that right after childbirth, he would tell Hannah about a divorce. Then she would leave his apartment, and he would finally live happily with Tiffany. Finally, the day when Hannah was taken to the maternity hospital came, and Joel got great news. He had become the father of a beautiful baby girl. Well, his wife was no longer pregnant, no need to take care of her anymore, but he couldn't talk to her frankly now. He wasn't allowed into the maternity ward yet, and he didn't want to write a letter, so he just packed up Hannah's belongings for now. He bought a baby kit at the baby store with Tiffany's help, a romper, diapers, and a blanket. Now no one can say that you didn't take care of the baby, Tiffany muttered as she helped him pack. I hope you'll help her move all her things to another apartment soon. It's time for you and me to set up our place. This apartment isn't bad, but it's obvious that Hannah didn't try to make it cozy. It's too modest, but I've already picked out some fancy curtains and other decorations. Your life will be completely different soon. It's already different, but I'm willing to live even in a hovel, as long as you're with me," Joel replied in a playful voice. When Joel came to pick her up from the maternity hospital, Anna realized that these were not the best times in her life. He was indifferent when he took the baby in his arms. He didn't even look at his daughter's face. Without kissing his wife, he silently gave her a cheap bouquet. Aren't you happy, Joel? Is it because we have a daughter and not a son? A young mother asked. Hurry up, the cab is waiting, Joel replied indifferently. He didn't know how he was going to explain everything to Hannah. He was afraid of her reaction. What if she starts crying, screaming, and refusing to leave my apartment? No, she was always calm. But they say things can change after the delivery. It's a good thing Tiffany's already there. Anna won't make a tantrum in front of her, the man thought. He was afraid to be alone with his wife, so he asked his mistress to be there, and Tiffany agreed. When they entered the apartment, Anna looked around bewildered and asked her husband, Didn't you buy a crib and a stroller? At this time, a smiling Tiffany came out of the room. Don't worry, Hannah. We took care of everything. We bought the crib, but you'll have to buy the stroller and everything else yourself. Joel also bought diapers and toys and even baby wipes, and he packed your stuff. Here's your suitcase. Come on, Joel. Tell her. She encouraged her lover. Yes, Hannah, we should get a divorce. This is Tiffany, and we are going to live here together. I mean, we already live here, Joel said. I don't understand. What do you mean? Anna sat down in confusion. 
Is this a joke? Does this look like a joke? People get divorced. It's not a big deal. Now we'll take you to your apartment. You and your baby will live there, Joel replied indifferently. But there's a tenant there. You know about that, she reminded her husband. Ask him to leave the apartment. What's the problem? Kids grow up fast, so soon you'll be able to work again. Also, the state will pay your child support. If I get a chance, I'll help too. Don't make a tragedy out of nothing, please. But why are you telling me this only now? Anna wondered. You were pregnant and he didn't want to make you worry. Don't you understand that? Tiffany replied. Okay, let's not waste time. I'll call you a cab. You need to have some rest. Feed the baby and do whatever you need to do. Also, Joel and I want to spend this evening together. Don't worry. We'll help you put your suitcase in the cab. Anna sighed and said, Call a cab. You've already decided everything for me. Thank you for the gifts and for such a surprise to Caroline and me. This news was not shocking to Hannah, but still, it was not pleasant. But she hoped it was because of her pregnancy, that she was making it up, that everything was okay. She wasn't going to cry and beg Joel not to kick her out in front of this confident, beautiful woman. Tiffany had no plans to leave Joel and his wife alone, so Hannah had no chance to talk to him. Besides, she knew from Joel's behavior that he would not change his mind. He didn't even care about his daughter, calling her that baby. How will I survive on my own? And what will the tenants say? I can't kick him out of the apartment. The contract isn't over yet, Hannah thought. Meanwhile, a cab arrived. Joel and Tiffany took Hannah's bags to the car. Hannah followed them, and her daughter suddenly started crying. I told you we had to hurry. How long is she going to cry? Tiffany grumbled grudgingly. I hate it when babies cry. Calm her down somehow. I don't even want to think that if I hadn't met you, I wouldn't have listened to that baby cry for months. The young father whispered to the new love of his life. Soon they were standing in front of the door of Hannah's apartment. She had the keys, but she rang the doorbell. She didn't inform the tenant that she was coming, so she couldn't just enter the apartment. Joel and Tiffany brought the suitcase and crib and left in silence. Parker, the young man who had rented Hannah's apartment, opened the door. He stared bewildered at Hannah and her baby and at the suitcases by the door. Hello, Parker, Anna said tiredly. I'm sorry to come here, but I have nowhere else to go. What happened? Something with your husband? Come in. Is that your suitcase? I'll take it inside. Please come in. Is that a girl? C Congratulations! Parker muttered confusedly and took Hannah's suitcase. Yes, her name is Caroline. Unfortunately, her father found another woman, and he only told me about it today. As soon as we got home from the maternity hospital, he kicked us out of the apartment, Anna said, and walked into the kitchen. She sat on a chair and continued, I swear I only found out about it an hour ago, so I couldn't even tell you about it. And now I have nowhere else to go. I wouldn't dare ask you to move out, but I don't know what to do. What a terrible story. What your husband did was awful. Unpack your suitcase, we'll figure something out, and then I'll find another apartment. What's that, a crib? Let me see if I can assemble it, Parker replied, and took the instructions for assembling the crib. Hannah didn't expect that after her husband kicked her out, a stranger would be willing to help her, and suddenly she burst into tears. Thank you so much. Forgive me for coming to you. Now I have to wash and feed my daughter. Do whatever you need to do. If there's anything you need, don't hesitate to tell me. I'll do everything I can. And now I'll assemble the crib. Don't you have a baby bathtub? And don't worry, there's a new large basin in the bathroom. It should be fine to bathe Caroline, the man told her. After the young mother fed her daughter and put her in the crib, she and Parker went into the kitchen and Hannah made tea. You know, Parker, Hannah began, you don't have to move out. 
You can stay here and pay half price. You'll live in the room and my daughter and I will stay in the kitchen. I'm having financial problems now and I don't think Joel will support us. It will take time to get child support and I can't even go back to work yet. So if you stay in this apartment, you will help me a lot. Caroline is very quiet. She won't bother you. No, we'll do it another way. You and Caroline will live in the room and I'll stay in the kitchen. I'll go and get a folding bed now and don't worry, I'll pay you the same as before, Parker said without regret. No, you rented an apartment without such a burden, the woman smiled sadly. I don't want to cause any problems for you. Besides, maybe Joel will come to his senses and apologize so Karen and I can go back home. I wanted us to have a full family, she cried again. You don't have to cry today. You know, I've often heard that women can experience postpartum depression and maybe your husband has something like that too. He's still very young. Maybe it's hard for him to realize he's a father now. Besides, I might be getting a promotion and moving to another city soon, so I'll leave your apartment anyway. So now go to your room and get some rest. In the meantime, I'll go to the store and get a folding bed. The man mouthed and went to the store. An hour later, Parker came home with a folding bed, a cake, fruits, and flowers. I'm back. I bought some flowers, fruits, and vitamins for you. You need a little celebration, he said cheerfully. <laughs> wow, but you don't have to do that, really. Anna was confused and didn't know what to say. Well, why not? A new person has been born on this planet. Let's celebrate. Make Caroline be happy, and you too. Tears came to Hannah's eyes again. Caroline's father didn't even want to look at his daughter, but the stranger was already calling her by her name and even bought them presents. They began to live together in a one-bedroom apartment. Little Caroline did not know yet who these people were. She only smiled at those who cared for her, her mother and this unknown man. Parker became attached to the baby and also tried to help Hannah he often bought diapers and baby food. The woman accepted these gifts, but she was embarrassed because she understood that Parker was not even her friend. He was just a tenant. She even felt guilty. Parker had to sleep in the kitchen on a folding bed because of her, and now he was spending money to buy different stuff for Caroline. Parker, please don't buy any presents for us. I feel very awkward. I'm not even sure if I can ever pay you back the money you spend, the girl said embarrassedly. Hannah, none of that matters now. All that matters is that Caroline has everything she needs. When she grows up, she'll pay me back. In the meantime, make a list of everything I bought for her, the man joked. Caroline was growing up very quickly, and it was getting harder and harder to take her for walks without a stroller. Hannah considered buying a stroller, but when she saw the prices, she realized she couldn't afford one. Hannah always had to choose what to buy. There wasn't enough money for everything she needed. She didn't know how she would survive without Parker's help. She knew she had no one to ask for help. She had no relatives, only a brother and sister who still lived in an orphanage. And she didn't want to ask Joel for help, nor could she go back to work soon. She didn't want to talk about the stroller with Parker. She thought he'd just go and buy it. He'd already spent too much money buying presents for her and Caroline. She would buy the stroller herself, a used one. It would cost half as much, and the condition should be good because mothers usually use it carefully. Looking for a used but good stroller, Hannah went to the local flea market where she found what she needed, a great stroller for half the price. When she came home, she immediately showed the stroller to Parker. Now Caroline has her own vehicle. Finally, we can go everywhere together. I just need to clean it. But why did you buy a used stroller? Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to buy a stroller, but I didn't dare because I thought you'd get mad. It's a good thing you didn't buy it. I would have been really mad, Parker. I'm not used to living on someone else's dime. I have some money left and I'm going to work later, Hannah answered, still in a good mood after buying the stroller. That's great, but still, if you need any help, just tell me. By the way, I have news. I don't know if you'll be happy, I've been offered a promotion, and I'm moving to another city, the man said regretfully. I'm very happy for you. You've been dreaming of a promotion for a long time. 
Caroline and I are going to miss you, Anna replied sadly. They became friends with Parker, and she enjoyed his company. Besides, she knew they had only survived because of Parker's help. Parker went somewhere, and Hannah, after feeding her daughter, began to clean the stroller. When she lifted the mattress, she found a piece of paper underneath. Previous owners might have left the receipt there when they bought the stroller. She took it, but it wasn't a receipt. It was a handwritten note addressed to Hannah. That is, the new owner of the stroller. And the content of this note was strange. The unknown man wrote, Dear stranger, I'm selling this stroller because tragedy happened in my life. After a premature birth, my wife and I lost our son. There's an omen that you cannot buy anything for the baby before birth, and we bought the stroller long before our baby was born. I sincerely wish you and your baby all the best in your life. I dare to suggest that you have some financial problems. I want and can help you. Go to the address below. You will find an old big oak near this building. In its hollow, you will find something that will help you get rid of your problems. Is this some kind of stupid joke? Thought Hannah. It's more like a spy game. Some old oak, a hollow. And what problem is he talking about? It's a little scary. But at the same time, it's interesting. I should go and see what's out there. I don't think anyone will be watching to make fun of me later. And even if they do, I don't see any problem. Yes, I'll go there. I won't say anything to Parker, and he's leaving anyway. It's too bad we won't see each other again. He must be happy, though. He's probably tired of Caroline and me, tired of living with strangers and sleeping in the kitchen, Anna thought, and put the note in her bag. The next day, she went with the new stroller and her daughter to the address mentioned in the note. She immediately found the old oak and the hollow in it. Looking around, she put her hand into the hollow and found a large bag. She grabbed that bag and headed home. She wondered what was in the bag. At home, she hastily unpacked the bag, which contained the children's clothes, a silver spoon, a toy, and an envelope tied with a ribbon. There was no note in the envelope, but there were $20,000. Anna counted the money over and over again, unable to believe her eyes. Has a miracle happened in her life? After all, this really is the solution to all her problems. She can no longer worry about anything until she starts working. Now she doesn't have to worry about money. She can even afford some gifts and goodies. But who should I thank? Who should I pray for? Whom should I wish happiness? Thought a happy Hannah. Soon Parker came home. It was time to pack. Well, Hannah, I'm leaving. I'm going to miss you and Caroline and worry about you. Please, if you need any help, call me. Don't worry, Parker. Now I know everything will be all right. I'm happy now. And soon our life will be even better. My daughter is growing up. I will start working soon. You don't have to worry about us. But Caroline and I will miss you too. I'll call you sometimes. You can call us whenever you want to, Anna said with a smile. It's good to see you in a good mood, Hannah. You're a smart girl and a wonderful mother too. I believe everything will work out the way you want it to. Parker packed his stuff, said goodbye, and left. The next day, Hannah was alone. There was no Parker by her side, but she was no longer that scared, lonely girl. Now she was a confident, strong woman. Hannah did not spend the enormous sum of money that had come so unexpectedly all at once. She spent the money slowly and wisely, realizing there would be no more miracles. She would have to rely on herself. She filed for divorce from Joel and for child support. It was time to go to court. Hannah asked a neighbor to babysit Caroline for a couple of hours. Mrs. Gibbons was an amazing, kind, sympathetic woman. Her son had a family and moved to another city long ago. The woman rarely saw her grandchildren, so she was always happy to babysit Caroline. In court, Hannah met her ex-husband for the first time in a year. He was depressed and nervous. He didn't even ask about the baby and tried not to look at his ex-wife. 
but she didn't care anymore. The man was out of her and Caroline's life. It was obvious that he didn't want to pay child support, even tried to dispute paternity, but to do that, he had to do a DNA test at his own expense, and it was clear that Joel couldn't afford that. Meeting Hannah on her way out of the building, her ex-husband said angrily, Why are you bothering me with your child? What do you want from me? I haven't thought about you for a year. Couldn't you go on with your life and not bother me? Do you really need my money? Or it's just revenge? You have a new coat, a new haircut, and expensive boots. But you keep pretending you're just a poor girl who was kicked out by your husband. Yes, I can afford new clothes. And not only that, but you must pay child support, Anna replied, and walked out of the building. Now she didn't understand why she had loved this man for so many years. Now, her love for Joel, her resentment toward him, and even all thoughts of the dream about a happy family were gone irretrievably. Even before she found the treasure, she had cut her ex-husband out of her life. But now she was only afraid of the future, of possible financial problems. But after the unknown man gave her such a gift, fear of the future gradually faded away. Her daughter needed a lot of things, and now Hannah could afford a massage therapist, exercises in the swimming pool for the kids, and much more. So the first three years of the girl's life went quietly. It was time to send Caroline to kindergarten. Finally, Hannah could get back to work. She didn't want to go back to her previous job, first because she had to work double shifts, and second because Joel worked there. Well, Hannah didn't know if her ex-husband still worked there, but she didn't want to be there. Everything reminded her of her first dreams and how they were shattered. Hannah started looking for another job and soon realized that it wasn't easy to find a good one. Her specialty was unclaimed and she had no opportunity to get a second degree. Besides, she had a long break from work. One day, she came to another company for an interview. At that time, she was willing to take any job. Unexpectedly, she met Parker. They barely communicated, only occasionally congratulating each other on the holidays. Hannah and Parker knew nothing about each other, except that everything was fine. Hannah didn't know that Parker was back in their city after getting another promotion. He was now a senior specialist at a big, successful company. They were happy to meet each other. Parker understood that Hannah really needed a job. You know, Hannah, I'm looking for an assistant, and I'd love it if you'd accept this offer, Parker said confidently. But I haven't worked as an assistant. I'm not sure I can handle it, Hannah replied, and felt uncomfortable for some reason when Parker looked her in the eye. Hannah, I'm sure you're the best candidate for this position. I promise not to be fussy about details. Besides, this schedule will suit you perfectly, Parker continued to persuade her. Thank you, Parker. I'm still grateful to fate that you once rented my apartment. You helped Caroline and me to survive, and you continue to help. But at the time, Hannah had no idea that Parker's help was much more significant than she thought. She took the job and immediately showed her best side, and soon, through this job and her communication with Parker, who was her boss, she made a weird discovery. One day, she noticed his handwritten text. It seemed rather familiar. No, she had definitely seen his handwriting before. It was exactly like the text she had seen on that note from the stroller. Anna kept that note. The next day, she took that note to the office, and her suspicion was confirmed. It was clear that Parker had written that note. When he arrived at the office, Anna silently put the note on his desk. Well, the man smiled, slightly embarrassed. You figured it out. But why? Why did you make up such a complicated scheme? That tree, that note, the girl asked. Hannah, I saw that you had problems. At the same time, I knew you wouldn't take the money from me. You were worried about every little thing, embarrassed, and when it was time for me to leave. So I found the best way to help you, the man replied with embarrassment. 
But how did you know I would buy that exact stroller? How did you know I would go to that tree after all? Someone else could have that money, Anna continued. Well, Parker smiled broadly. I thought it through. I thought through every step. There could be no mistake. Also, I was following you. I warned the stroller seller in advance, and I kept an eye on the tree. Forgive me. Why didn't I think of it right away? All these years, I wondered who had given Caroline and me such a gift. But you mentioned your baby in the note. Is that true? The girl asked seriously. Yes, Hannah. Everything is true. Except that the stroller was bought for my baby. I was married, and we were expecting a baby. And when my wife was seven months pregnant, something went wrong. My son was born prematurely and didn't make it. I don't know how we survived that loss. We lived together for another year and then got divorced. I left the apartment to my wife and found another place for myself. And that's how I met you. My wife came to her senses. She even got married again. Now she has a child. And I'm still alone. But why me? Why did you decide to help me? I mean... You gave me so much money. I knew that money would help you and your daughter, and I didn't need it. And please don't even mention that you'll give me that money back. I don't even want to hear it. I just wanted to help you. Why not? I'm so grateful to you. You are right. I wouldn't take that money, though I really needed it. You saved Caroline and me from a lot of hardship and humiliation through what you did. I didn't know where to get some money, and I didn't have anyone to ask for help. Caroline was just a baby. I had no money for a babysitter, so I couldn't get a job. Without your help, I would have had to beg my ex-husband to help us, to beg for child support. Thank you, Parker. But I will try to pay you back, because I'm working now, so I can save some money. I won't be able to pay it all at once, but please stop. I don't want to hear this anymore. Forget about the money and be happy. Is that clear? As your boss, I'm telling you to forget it all and go to work, said Parker and smiled. It's clear, smiled Hannah, but I will never forget it. As it turned out, Parker had even more memories. He remembered renting an apartment from a pretty and happy girl who got married recently, even when he had just divorced his wife, he thought. I wish I had met you before, Hannah. And soon her husband kicked her out, and she came to him with the baby, unhappy and lonely. It wasn't the right time to start a relationship. If he had tried to court her, he could offend the girl, and if she ever reciprocated, it would only be out of desperation. So all Parker dared to do was help her financially. Besides, he knew that Hannah still loved her ex-husband and wanted to return to him. Parker knew it was probably impossible, so he didn't want to interfere in her life and get in her way. And then he got a promotion, moved to another city, and they haven't seen each other for almost three years. But even now... Parker hesitated to confess his feelings. Although now Hannah was a confident and independent woman, and Parker had better chances. Parker felt that now she might reciprocate his feelings, not out of gratitude or because she wanted to ensure a good future for her daughter, but simply because she liked him too. And Hannah realized that Parker wasn't just helping her out of compassion. Soon he decided to confess his feelings after all. On Friday, Parker called Hannah into his office. Anna, what time do you need to pick up Caroline from kindergarten today? At 7 p.m. Is something wrong? Wondered Hannah. That's great. Please finish all the work tasks within one hour, and then let's go out for dinner, Parker said, slightly embarrassed. But I have a lot of work to do. I can't finish it in one hour, Hannah replied uncertainly. Then complete only the most important tasks. You can get everything else done next week. He knew that Hannah had already finished all the tasks. Okay, I got it and Hannah headed to her desk to do what her boss told her, and she got it done quickly. An hour later, they were having dinner and talking in the restaurant. Hannah noticed that Parker was very nervous, and then he said, Hannah, I fell in love with you at first sight. The day I first saw you, I thought to myself, I wish we had met before. Where were you? While we were living together, you became my family, and I love Caroline as if she were my daughter. I love both of you. It was very hard for me to start living alone again. Hannah caught her breath after listening to everything Parker said. She couldn't believe her ears. Took a sip of water and replied, Parker, I'm so happy to hear that. I love you too. I fell in love with you years ago, and when you left, 
I didn't know how to live without you. You were a part of our family, and I know I can trust you. I'm glad you started this conversation first. I'm not sure I dare confess to you first. They sat there face to face. Parker took Hannah's hands. Parker, does this mean we can be together? The girl asked timidly, looking into his eyes. Of course. What else could stop us? The man smiled, and they left the table. He put his arms around his beloved and kissed her softly. She kissed him back. Then he whispered in her ear, Anna, we have to hurry because we have to pick up our daughter from kindergarten. Soon after, Parker and Hannah had a big wedding. She hadn't heard from her ex-husband in a long time, but she recently found out that he had sold his apartment and moved somewhere so she could deprive him of his parental rights, and Parker was able to adopt Caroline. The girl began calling him Daddy from the first day, and she loved him as if he were her biological father. Perhaps someday she will learn the real story of her family, but it will never change her attitude toward her parents.